Hi, my name is Julian Adams and welcome to Simplified Safety. And today we're going to explore your rooftop guardrail options. Isn't guardrail just guardrail, you might ask? That's a good question. You wouldn't use a Prius to tow a flatbed. So just like there are a lot of different vehicles for different purposes, there's different guardrail that you would use to protect people in different situations. To help you explore these options, I'm gonna tell you a story about a man named Dan. So Dan is a manager of a manufacturing plant and he's been tasked by corporate to increase their safety and they want him to start with a rooftop guardrail. Dan's got a few concerns. First, he's got a budget that he needs to be able to work within. He's also concerned about his time because corporate asked him to get this done yesterday. And he doesn't really know much about guardrail or the OSHA requirements. So instead of spending time he doesn't have trying to figure this all out, he decides to consult with a fall protection company. In this case, Simplified Safety. Dan and his friendly, good looking fall protection expert who off the top of my head, I don't know, we'll just call Call him Julian. Hi, my name is Julian Adams. <laughs> they meet to inspect his roof. Dan has multiple buildings. He's got an office building and a manufacturing building. They decide to tackle the office building first, which is just a nice flat roof. The first thing that they notice as they step out of the roof hatch onto that roof is that the hatch itself has no guardrail. OSHA requires that any ladderway hole, which is what a roof hatch is, has guardrail as well as a self-closing safety gate or an offset. So in this case, Dan has two options. He can mount a guardrail right to the roof hatch, or he can use a non-penetrating guardrail that wraps around the roof hatch. Dan's not really sure about the integrity of his roof hatch, so he decides to use the non-penetrating guardrail as the better long-term solution. So Dan and Julian continue their inspection of the roof and they find a number of HVAC units near the roof edge. Julian notices that there's a parapet wall, which is just a short structural wall at the edge of their roof that's right there next to the HVACs. And he tells Dan that he can actually mount a guardrail right onto that parapet wall. This would save him material costs for the guardrail, but Dan's a little concerned about the structure of the parapet wall and he doesn't wanna to have to get an engineering survey, which would cost him additional time and money. So he decides that a mounted guardrail is not the right option because he doesn't wanna put his people or the roof at risk. Julian tells Dan about a non-penetrating guardrail option called KeyGuard. And the fact that anybody can install it, it's gonna last for years and years, and there's no need for any rooftop penetrations really excites Dan. That means he can save money using his own people to install it. He doesn't have to worry about voiding his warranty, and he's probably gonna retire before he has to even think about replacing it. All right, so Dan and Julian continue walking the roof and they see some contractors doing a roof repair. And these contractors are actually using a safety yellow metal non-penetrating guardrail. Dan notices that and asks Julian if that's something he can consider. Good question, Julian says. Some non-penetrating guardrail systems are temporary and some are permanent. One difference is material. Powder-coated steel guardrail is not gonna last near as long as a hot dip galvanized guardrail system. You also want to avoid the welded steel panels because those weld spots are just future weaknesses for decay and failure. Another thing to consider is the environment. Is the guardrail going to be able to withstand high winds or winter? For instance, I read an instruction manual that says if the winds get above 70 miles per hour, that guardrail needs to be taken down. For sure sign of a temporary railing. So Dan's pretty thankful for this explanation and they continue their inspection. The first thing that Julian and Dan notice as they climb the ladder on the outside of the manufacturing building is that there's no guardrail on either side of that ladder. That's a very important area that you need to protect because as soon as you step onto the roof, you're exposed to the fall hazard. The other thing that they notice is that it's a metal roof, which means that they can't use your standard non-penetrating guardrail system. The type of metal roof is going to determine what type of guardrail they can use. If it's a standing seam metal roof, they can still do non-penetrating by using a clamping system that just clamps right onto the seam and you can install your guardrail right from there. If you have a corrugated metal roof or an R panel roof, you don't have a non-penetrating option and you're gonna to have to use a self-drilling screw with some type of roof sealant like butyl tape in order to install a plate that you'll use to attach your guardrail onto. 
Dan and Julian continue their inspection of the manufacturing building roof. They're looking for any work zones that are within 15 feet of the roof edge to comply with OSHA's temporary and infrequent clause. These are going to be the locations they're going to plan guardrail for. So Dan and Julian work together to create a presentation including costs for the whole facility. Dan presents it to corporate, corporate loves it, Dan's a superhero, he gets promoted twice and lives happily ever after. On a serious note, Dan is able to protect his people. He's able to save time because he used an expert. He's able to observe his budget by focusing in on the right areas for guardrail and he meets the corporate objectives. Yay, Dan. So to wrap this all up, there are four questions that you can ask yourself in order to determine what guardrail you should use. Question one is whether you want the guardrail to be temporary or permanent. Question two is whether you want the guardrail to be mounted or non-penetrating. Question three is whether you want a welded guardrail or if you want a component-based guardrail. And question four, what type of roof are you working with? If you're not sure what guardrail to choose, if you have additional questions, or you're just ready to get that fall protection project started, then please reach out to one of our fall protection experts and they'll help you answer these and other important questions. Thank you for watching. My name is Julian Adams and have a safe day. Yeah. My name is Julian. This is recorded. Uh, <laughs> company, Simba 5, all protection company. Doesn't matter, there's a train. Choo -choo. You're welcome, future edit, and I'm sorry, future Julian. <laughs>